everybody. Let's uh, everyone take their seat. So it's my pleasure to welcome the third and final speaker of this session, uh, Mo Yin, who's going to talk about reversing quantum process. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the last talk today. I'm Mo Yin from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, now in Guangzhou. Today, I'm going to talk about one of our recent work, reversing unknown quantum channel use, uh, based on the technique called virtual comp. So to help you understand better the setting of this problem, we can further think about this scenario. Suppose you have some quantum state row, which just pass through some unknown quantum process, as shown by the black box here. So now it becomes some unwanted state sigma. So for this unknown process, you can think, for example, it, is, uh, it can be a magnetic field in some space, so your state just suddenly passes through it. Or it can be some unknown noise in your quantum hardware. Or it can be a quantum device uh, given by one of your colleagues from some experiment group, but he just forgot to tell you what it is. So to you, this process is an, uh, it's a black box, but in these examples, you can see you can still query it and use it again for many times. So now the question is, if you don't know what is this uh, uh, process and you don't want to do process tomography to, see, to know what it is, is it still possible to get back exactly the original state row? So now what you can do is just by querying this uh, black box, use it again for many times, and also perform some other operations. So if possible, then this whole part performs like the inverse of this quantum channel. So I think for people who first uh, see this problem, they think it's, it is quite amazing, because how could you just perform this operation again and again for many times? then it suddenly becomes the inverse of this uh, process. But actually, it is possible. And when this, unit, uh, this uh, unknown black box is a unitary gate, then there have already been many interesting studies. And there are two very exciting results uh, recently. One is last year, uh, it, uh, the first uh, protocol for qubit unitary gate has been derived, which shows that you don't need to use um, uh, you, don't, you don't need to know what is this unitary gate, but by just querying it for four times, you can always, you can reverse arbitrary qubit unitary gate. And a more exciting result is, uh, this year is that uh, uh, people show that for arbitrary unitary and ar arbitrary dimension, there exists a general quantum protocol which can reverse all these uh, unitary gates deterministically and exactly by just querying it for finite times. So this reverse is actually possible. So now come back to our problem. If this black box is not just a unit gate, but a general quantum channel, is this still possible? And I think one thing you will first notice is that the inverse of a quantum channel is usually not a CPTP map. So uh, it is not a, actually a physical process. So to deal with this, today I will first talk about these two concepts, uh, yeah, about two related work, works. The first is about virtual process, which is used to reverse a given quantum channel. And the second is about quantum comp, which is used to reverse unknown unit gate. And after introducing this, we will combine these ideas and have this virtual comp. And then we will use this to reverse, solve this problem to reverse the unknown channel. And then I will show some theoretical results and applications. So first, about uh, reversing a quantum channel, we know that in general, usually the inverse of a CPTP map is actually uh, an HPTP map. And this can be done because for arbitrary HPTP map, it can be defined in uh, uh, decomposing an alpha combination of many quantum channels with positive and negative coefficients. So based on this, all HPTP maps can be simulated by sampling and post-processing. And this technique has already been used in error mitigation. 
uh, we know that in probabilistic error cancellation, for example, there is a depressing noise in your quantum circuit. And in this case, we know what this noise level P is. And then what we can, if we want to cancel this error, what we can do is just uh, first calculate the, the inverse of it and decompose it into uh, different quantum channels. For example, the inverse of the pricing channel is equal to some coefficient alpha times the identity channel minus beta times the Fourier depressing channel. So then what we can do is uh, perform, uh, perform the identity channel after this uh, depressing noise, or you perform a Fourier depressing channel after it with this probability distribution related to these coefficients. And in average, the out outcome of the first one minus the outcome of the second one will be proportional to state rho. So it realizes the in inverse of this um, uh, depressing noise and cancel this error. So this is based on virtual process to realize a given channel inverse. And the second thing I need to introduce is about quantum count. So in quantum computing, we not only can do transformation on quantum state, but transform it to another state sigma, we can also do transformation on quantum operations, uh, transform an operation E to an operation F. And in general, this can be done by this called, this is quantum network called quantum comp. And in this figure, it is a one slot of quantum comp, which means it just use this operation for one time. And you can see that after you input this uh, operation you want to transform, then the whole pro uh, process uh, becomes a, an operation from Herbert space C to Herbert space D, which is related to the target, uh, the operation you wanted. And in general, to transform an operation, you can use this operation for many times. And in general, what we can use is an n-slot quantum comp. So it is a quantum network where you can insert this uh, uh, process for n times here. And, for, uh, and here, uh, Julio and others have shown that arbitrary n-slot quantum comp have this choi, can be represented by their Choi operator in this mathematical formula. And I don't, know, I don't want to go to the detail for this, but just uh, we just need to know that to find a, uh, a, quant a feasible quantum comp, we can uh, do this by finding the choice operator with these conditions. So now, to reverse an unknown unitary gate based on quantum comp can be formulated like this. So now our problem is for arbitrary unitary gate, we need to find uh, an n-slot quantum comp, which will take uh, n copies of the, this unitary gate as the input in each slot, and then the whole process from P to F now performs like the inverse of this unitary gate for arbitrary unitary. And previous results have shown that such quantum comp do exist, which can perfectly, perfectly reverse all this unitary gate. So based on these two ideas, we have this uh, virtual comp. So it is just an alpha combination of many quantum comps with positive and negative coefficients. So to realize a virtual comp, we just need to, uh, we also just need the sampling and post-processing of these quantum comps. And now for our problem, to so reversing an unknown um, channel, uh, it can be formulated like this. So here, unknown channel means it, this channel is from a given set, uh, from a, uh, N1 to Nm, while the element number can be finite or infinite. So here we just know that this channel is from this side, but we don't know what exactly it is. And now the problem is to find a virtual comp here, which will use this unknown channel for n times. And then the whole process performs like the inverse of this channel for all this channel in this set. So it will give us the original state row uh, at last. So for this problem, to reverse uh, all these uh, channels in this set based on uh, virtual comp. Now let's see some theoretical results. So the first situation we consider is about uh, still about reversing depressing noise, but here what is the noise level is is unknown. We only know that it is from a given set with 
elements P1, P2 to Pn. Uh, while for the continuous region, noise level in continuous region, which have infinite numbers, we will discuss about it later. So now let's see uh, this situation where these set have finite elements. Then the first result we found is that if there are two uh, possible candidates, P1 and P P2, then we can always find out one slot virtual comp that can reverse both these two depriving noise by just calling it for one time. So we don't need to know whether uh, which process is, no, uh, whether it is P1 uh, depriving with P1 or with P2. This virtual comp can always perform the inverse of it. But if there are three elements, then one slot virtual combi is not enough to perform perfect reversion for all of these uh, noise. So if it, uh, one slot virtual comp can uh, reverse P1 and P2 perfectly, then for P3, there will, will always be some error. So to reverse this set, then we need a two slot virtual comp, which means pairing this on the process twice. So in general, here give, uh, comes our first result. For a de depolarizing noise uh, with the noise parameter has n plus one candidate, uh, so it can be either p1, p2, or pn plus one, there, then there always exists an n slot virtual comp, which, can, which will use this on the process for n times, and then realize the inverse of it for all these noise levels. So this is our first result. So here, let's make things more clear. So here, what we know is that this depriving is from this noise set with n plus one candidate. And what we don't know is which one exactly it is. Then we can always find this n slot virtual comp that use this depriving noise for n times. And then the whole process will perform like, just like the inverse of this unknown process. And there are some other points uh, I, I need to point out. First, if you want to use a quantum comp, or even a probabilistic quantum comp, so you will not allow some failure, then it doesn't work. So virtual here is necessary. And the second thing is we found that for n slots, uh, n plus one candidate is already, uh, is already the optimal number. So if there are n plus two candidates, then no such n slot virtual comp exists, can perfectly re re reverse all these uh, depriving noise. And this gives us this no-go theory. A virtual comp with finite slot cannot universally reverse the all quantum channels. This is something different from unit case, as previous results have shown that there exists a finite slot quantum comp can universally re reverse all unit gates. While here, a finite slot virtual comp cannot universally reverse all quantum channels. This is something different from channel and unit rate. So the, besides the depressing noise, we also consider the situation about the general quantum channels. So here, this result, we, found, we have a theoretic proof for this result, that by using a one slot virtual comp, we can always reverse any two quantum channels. So which means you, if you are given two quantum channels, uh, no matter what it is, and no matter what it mentioned it is, uh, but they are all invertible, then we can always find a one slot virtual comp that can reverse all these quantum channels by just querying it for one time. And we have theoretical proof in our article. And besides this, we also have an observation based on numerical results, uh, which shows that if uh, we randomly generate a qubit to qubit quantum channel, and we generate 13 different uh, qubit channels, then we can always numerically find a one slot virtual comp which can perfectly reverse all these elements. But when we generate 14 different quantum channels, then uh, no such one slot virtual comp exists. And intuition here is that qubit to qubit quantum channel is, can always be determined by 12 different parameters. So 12 plus one is equal to 13. And while the proof here is quite difficult, so actually we don't know how to prove it yet. Okay, the last theoretical result is about uh, uh, reversing depolarizing noise in a continuous region. So before we have shown that with our finite slot virtual comp, we can, surely we cannot uh, reverse all these uh, depolarizing noise per perfectly because there are infinite many elements here. So what we can do is to reverse it approximately. 
so that for uh, all this noise after the this whole process it will be close to the identity quantum channel so here the distance is measured by the diamond on here and we found that uh by just using the previous the protocol which uh is an unslot quantum comb which can perfectly reverse p1 p2 and the n minus one element in this uh, range uh, in this uh, in this region uh, this protocol already works quite nice for all these noise levels and we sh we have proved that the worst case um, error for all these uh, depressing noise will decay in the scale one over n so here is a numerical experiment we did uh, by using one two three four five uh, uh, so pairing the sound of the price noise for one two three four five this time for this noise region and we can show that the worst case error decay very fast and when we query it for five times the already uh, for most of these uh, depressing noise uh, they are they are already very close to the identical quantum channel So now let's see some applications. The first application is a direct application of the previous uh, result. So here we can use it in error cancellation. So before we show that in probabilistic error cancellation, uh, for, uh, it deals with a given point uh, depressing noise. So we need to know what this noise level P is. Well, here, using this virtual combo, virtual combo we can uh, cancel the surprising noise in our region and we don't need to know what exactly it is. Uh, and to physically realize it, to remember that uh, virtual comb it can be decomposed in an alpha combination of many quantum, quantum combs. So we just need to find a physical, uh, some quantum comb that is, is simple to be, it can be implemented easily in our laboratory. And here we found a quite simple uh, the composition. Well, what we need to do is either you do nothing uh, on the receiver state, so perform an identity operator, or you perform the uh, fully depressing ch channel on uh, after the sound of noise, just as what we did here for in the probabilistic uh, error cancellation. Well, the difference is we also need to perform this, so we need to query this depressing noise again for k times. Uh, where k is from 1 to n. So here, we just need to sequentially perform this uh, unknown depressing for k times on the received state. So we just let our state go through this uh, unknown, unknown process again and again for k times. And the probability it, it can be calculated based on uh, by solving these, those problems. So here, what we show is that uh, this uh, is actually physically uh, can be realized and it has this realization so that maybe in some experiment, we don't need to first do tomography to know what is the depressing noise. And then we can still cancel it by using this virtual comp technique. And for most of these errors, it will decay very fast. It will go goes to the identity channel uh, in the scale one of in the uh, the error is in the scale one over n. So the second application is uh, be, has been is uh, using this to realize unity inverse. As before, we have shown that uh, quantum comb has already shown that with a finite slot, quantum comb it can reverse arbitrary unity gates. And here, an interesting result here is that using virtual comb, arbitrary unity gate no matter what the dimension is. We can always use our one slot virtual comp to reverse this uh, unity gate. So actually the circuit here by using virtual comp will be much simpler than using quantum comp. And we also calculated the sampling overhead for using virtual comp, uh, which have a relation with the fidelity of using quantum comp. And here the cost uh, of estimation, uh, the sampling overhead shot related to the uh, cost for estimating this value. So I, I, would, I don't go to the detail here. I just want to mention one numerical result we found. If we want to uh, estimate this value, which means we have some initial state has zero bar zero, 
And by using ju just using uh, Unity Gate U, we want to estimate U dagger K0 bar 0 U, uh, the expectation value of it under observation Z. Then this numerical result shows that on the same number, uh, query number for this unknown Unity Gate, the one slot virtual comp have a better performance than the optimal four slot quantum comp. So you can see the simulation error is lo uh, lower and also the variance is uh, smaller. And the last thing I want to mention is just if you uh, combine the, both, uh, the previous two applications, then you can also have this protocol, which is now the unknown process is a unit gate after depressing noise, while here you both don't know what is this unit gate U, and you don't know what this noise level is. Well, here you can still construct this virtual comp which just querying this U and uh, the price noise after the price noise DP, DP for a finite times, and then you can get back the perfectly this original unit gate U. Well, in the whole process, you don't need to know what is this the price noise, and you don't need to know what is this unit gate U. So here it shows that it really could be done in, by using this virtual comp. So that's all for today's talk. And if you just need to, uh, to remember one sentence in this talk, it will be, if you want to reverse an unknown quantum channel deterministically and exactly, then it is possible by using this uh, virtual comp. And here we have to show some results in reversing depressing noise, general quantum channels, and also approximately reverse deploy noise. And we see applications in error cancellation and also in three inversion. And thanks, that's all. Thanks for the nice talk. Do we have questions in the audience? Okay, one there, two there. Hi, um, thanks a lot for a very interesting talk. Um, I have two questions. So one is that how how fundamentally is your method different from like the the um, method by Yoshida et al, where I think to my best understanding is relying on the symmetry of the totally anti-symmetric state to revert the unitary. I don't know if it's wrong, Yoshida can correct me here, but um, it, how, how is this fundamentally different in, in your case now that you're using like having channels instead? Uh, I think the difference, um, so here, uh, both technique, uh, both in our virtual comp and in their result for reversing these things, we use this quantum structure. So in this sense, we both use semi-definite programming to solve, to see whether it is, uh, there are feasible solutions or not. So in this sense, they are the same. What difference is that this virtual comp, uh, so to realize so quantum comp cannot be used to realize uh, this channel uh, inversion. So previously, like what they, they did is usually in the, those unitary inversion, which can be done by quantum comp. Well, here, if you want to reverse unknown uh, quantum channels, then you really need to use virtual comp. As in our article, we proved that if you quantum comp are probabilistically, then there are some constraints that uh, forbid you to reverse the uh, quantum channels so that uh, here is uh, here we need is the virtual comp. And mathematically, maybe um, maybe if you want to know the mathematical difference, then it is just uh, the constraint for virtual comp and quantum comp are different in those same definite programming problems. Okay, thanks. Um, and the second question is um, like your virtual comps has negative. Uh, coefficient. So, how do you see how you can easily implement it in actual applications? Uh, the negative coefficients uh, uh, for uh, this is just uh, quite nature, as people previous did for uh, probabilistic error cancellation. So, as I mentioned, so here this um, this is a, a decomposition for an HTTP map. Here has the negative coefficient here. So here is a simulation of it uh, by just probabilistically perform the identity channel and probabilistically perform the depressing channel. And in average, 
uh, so here the average is you uh, get the output here and minus the get uh, output here, and they will in average be equal to this uh, uh, to the target to, to this HPTP map. So this is usually used uh, in calculating this. Uh, calculating these things. So in estimating some state after some observable, so you can st statistically calculate this by uh, uh, the plus one minus some negative one. Okay, thanks. It's the the AES for... Oh, yeah. Give it. Yeah, Uh, hi, thanks for the nice talk. Um, on one of the slides, when he showed how to reverse depolarizing noise, there was this parameter k for the number of times you repeated. Um, oh, you mean this one or the depolarizing? I, th I think it was in the applications section. Yeah, the, you apply, apply the process to the receive state k times. How do you? You mean this one? Yeah, how do you how do you choose k, and does it like do you know the impact on the success? Ah, the... So here, this is uh, so, uh, and so here, let's consider the realization for an n slot virtual com in this protocol. So this uh, n slot, uh, which means you will use this uh, this unknown depressing noise for n times. So how to uh, you, uh, so this virtual com can be decomposed into n plus two elements. So uh, while the first element is an uh, identity channel, which just uh, a quantum comp that uh, don't use uh, this uh, quantum, uh, this uh, depressing noise. So you just uh, pass through it away. And this is a quantum comp that just goes through a depressing, fully depressing noise and don't use uh, each one of it, each one of it. And the uh, CK is, uh, and then the other, um, my uh, n terms are those which will ac uh, access this unknown depressing noise for one time, for two times, or for three times. So there are different. So there are these n plus two different quantum comps, which uh, actually, for sure, it finally looks just like this. And they can be. Uh, and so here is just an example for sequentially perform this for three times. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And then um, how does the sampling probability compare to that of doing uh, probabilistic error cancellation? Uh, the sampling cost even, sorry. Uh, so the sampling cost actually depends uh, on both two things. So one is uh, the n, uh, one is the n here. So how many noise you want to exactly reverse and one is the uh, noise region P1 and P2. If for P1, 2, P2, if I remember clear, uh, they are small, then the sampling overhead is uh, also small. If they are large, then uh, I think there is a table in our appendix. Uh, if not, you can send me an email. Um, so it depends on these two things. OK, thank you. One question down there. I wonder if you have thought about uh, combs with more than two inputs and two outputs. Like in other words, reversing uh, two qubit gates or channels with uh, multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Uh, sorry, I'm not very sure about uh, this question. If you consider a single comb, yeah, you, there's it's like multiple combs concatenated. And each single comb consists of two inputs and two outputs, right? Uh, two, you mean two input and two output? Or... Just consider one comb, and you are plugging in a one qubit gate, right? So the comb has two inputs and two outputs. Uh... So what if the gate is two qubit, two qubit gate? Uh, because here we have a thing, uh, so it, it, uh, a two qubit, qubit gate can be regarded as a uh, system with dimension four, right? So there, for this result, uh, if uh, 
uh, we just need to change the dimension for the input channel you considered. Uh, for example, in this, uh, in this uh, result, it uh, doesn't depend on the dimension of this channel. So for arbitrary quantum two quantum it's, channels, it's, there is this. It's not about one. dimension, it's about the independent inputs. If the channel has independent inputs and independent outputs, Oh, uh, so you mean a channel? So, uh, for example, here N one, you mean the input and output have different different dimensions. Maybe different dimensions, but different inputs and different outputs. Okay, maybe I don't uh, really get that point, or maybe we can discuss later. Uh, sure. Okay, let's thank Moyin and all the previous speakers in the session. This concludes the day. Have a nice lunch and afternoon and see you for the banquet.